Welcome back guys, it's been a while, sorry about that. Had an engineering calculus exam as stated in the previous video, which I finally finished. It was fucking hard, but hopefully I'll pass. Um, I'm currently talking to you from the future, meaning this was shot after the video you're supposed to be watching now. Um, I just want to get a few things out of the way first. Number one is I'm on vacation now for about a month before I have to go back to university. And um, it sucks because obviously I won't finish the car in a month, but I can put in way longer hours now per day, get some more work done, also get some more filming done. So maybe I'll be able to put out two videos a week, we'll see. And um, also I want to apologize secondly for the poor structure of this video because I didn't have a lot of time to film for this video due to the studying for my exam. And also some of my footage got corrupted, like a time lapse and some other bit. So the progress is kind of strange because you'll see it at one bit and then the next segment of a video, um, a lot more has been done. So again, I apologize for that, but um, this is where the fun starts, guys. So hope you enjoy. So yesterday I got tired of scraping off stone chip and rubberizing from the underbody and decided to bring it outside to get a pressure wash because there was a lot of dirt accumulated everywhere. And um, yeah. It is quite the amount. Most of it came out of the rocker section, which runs from the front wheel to the back wheel, basically um, part of the unibody design. So yeah, cleaned that out. A lot of it came out of the rear quarter panels as well. So uh, now it's just a bit more pleasant to work with and also um, less likely to rust in the future because that is a sponge which holds water and causes rust. So yeah, let's get back to work. Okay, sorry for the grimy footage, it's getting dark outside. Uh, anyway, I've been trimming down the transmission tunnel to go into its spot. Now, it's almost a perfect fit, still needs to be trimmed down a little bit. Oh look, someone did some brazing repair. Didn't do a good job, we'll be touching that up. But anyway, before we finish trimming that down and welding it in, we first need to weld in the transmission cross member into its spot. Um, and even though you will never see this surface in your life again i went and cleaned it up and repainted it anyway because why put something dirty back when you've done the effort to take it out um, i use black edge primer it works pretty well but unfortunately um, you do need to clean it up down to bare metal if you want it to adhere properly two coats should be enough if you have a spray gun use that i don't so a brush works just fine um, First coat I applied normally and then the second coat I dabbed it on because I don't like the streaky finish of a brush. I feel this hammer tone texture um, looks better in my opinion. But uh, yeah, that's not relevant because you'll never see it, but I did it anyway, so yeah.
Right, so um, transmission cross member is welded in. Uh, it's not the prettiest weld. I've had some help, but it doesn't matter. It's ground down anyway. It will do. So here's the thing. Some of you might know this. Some of you might not. So I'm going to tell you anyway. This is a load bearing piece. Whenever there's loads and stresses involved, your welds are typically your weak points because during welding, you literally melt this metal and it will cool down very quickly relative to the room temperature. That creates hardened metal. Now, hardened metal is strong, but it's very brittle, meaning it can crack and break fairly easily under load compared to malleable metal that will bend and absorb loads easier. So, what you want to do is you want to take a butane torch and you want to heat up this metal until red hot and then slowly close the butane torch so that you slowly cool down the metal. This process is known as annealing and it will make the metal malleable again, meaning it's soft. Right, so I realized I'm facing a little bit of a challenge getting this front end mated to this body. Because if I just cut the frame rails and weld them in first, it doesn't leave a lot of room for aligning the rest of the stuff, which is just as important, especially the front radiator support. Luckily, I'm a hoarder and um, I kept all the scrap metal that came out of that nasty ass Jaguar suspension that used to be in here. And the square tubing is in a decent shape. I cleaned it up a bit. Anyway, conveniently, it fits inside. the existing frame rails. Now, yeah, it wiggles around a little bit. Don't worry, I'll fix that. But anyway, the benefit of this is I can throw a seam around here and this would stay here. Then I can just pick that up, slide it over here and not weld it in yet. This will support the weight of that. Then I don't need to worry too much about aligning stuff with the engine jack. And while that is slid over here, I can just finish all this once this is done i can just throw a seam around here and then this section that's open i can just box it in and you wouldn't even know it's there also this will add a lot of strength to the inside of this rather thin frame rail so um yeah in hindsight i was quite stupid i should have cut the frame all the way to the back and that one as well and then just weld it in there um, up against the transmission cross member but i didn't think that far ahead and I feel this is a pretty good solution anyway. So yeah, that's a plan. All right, so I finished those frame inserts. Um, went a little bit overkill, but now I know it's strong enough for sure. To make it sit more flush against the inside, um, I cut a slit down the center, and instead of bending this open by hand, I turned it around and cut a groove down the back center, and then I welded that groove, and the contraction of the metal due to the welding actually opened it up this much by itself and added bonuses it's now spring loaded so when I take this and I insert it into the frame rail it will open itself up and sit nice and flush against the inside of a frame rail and also after that um, I cut a notch into it bent it and re-welded it now I'm not the best at welding as you can see but uh, this is an acceptable bead of stick weld. Anyways, I did that, so this angle now matches that angle. So I can just insert it in there, spot weld a few sides here, throw a seam down there, and then it can just slide in and out with the whole thing attached. I also gave it a coat of edge primer to prevent some rust. But uh, yeah, I'm tired, it's late. Gonna go home and we'll tackle the rest of it in the morning. All right, so. As you guys can see, the transplant is finally complete. Now, sorry for grimy footage, it is getting dark out, but I'm refilming the segment because I lost a lot of footage of me doing all of this stuff. But in summary, I did it myself. I did the front end myself. I did the transmission tunnel myself as well. Now, as you saw in a previous segment, um, someone helped me with a transmission cross member and he was supposed to help me with the rest of the stuff as well because I suck at welding. Now, I'm very perfectionistic and wanted someone who's good at this stuff to do it for me, but something came up and he couldn't help me out anymore but he was generous enough to leave me his MIG welder and told me I could use it now um, I have no experience with a MIG welder it's way more complicated in my opinion than a stick welder because like a stick you just 
use an electrode, set the amperage and have a steady hand, there you go. This thing has three settings, you have volts, amps and wire feed speed and there is gas involved. But um, I used a bit of scrap metal, figured out the settings and to be honest, once you get to know the settings and what they do, MIG welding is really easy, like way easier than stick welding. Any idiot can do MIG welding if they know how to use a machine. Um, am I satisfied with how the stuff turned out? No. I'm very perfectionistic, as I said, and um, considering I had no experience with this, it didn't turn out too well. But then again, considering I have no experience with this, it turned out all right for a first attempt. Now, let me show you what I've done. The square tubing inserts for the frame rails worked wonders. Um, it's spot welded there, there and there and then that section as well. I still need to box this in to close this bit down, but um, it helped me out so much. Without that square tubing inserts, this would have been impossible to do because just having everything lined up while you do it is really hard. Um, anyways, the spot welds for the sides turned out nice as well. The sheet metal up top and the front radiator supports and also the other side now um i also did the inside like closed all the holes in the floor pan where i ground out those ugly old seat mounts and um also did the transmission tunnel now this was a pain in the ass and also this bit down here because with sheet metal you can't just throw a seam and hope it will work. You basically have to tack it in place first, make sure it's flush, and then you have to tack it everywhere where it's flush. Preferably at least two centimeters apart. And um, then you like slightly tap it with a hammer until the two sections are flush, you know, and not like this. And then you just like tack it there as well. And then you proceed, hammer, tap it, tack it, hammer, tap it, tack it. And, um, even after your tack welds are like spaced every centimeter from each other, you can't just go and throw a seam because it's too much heat. So you're either going to burn through the sheet metal or you're going to warp it. So you end up tack welding this entire bloody thing. It takes forever and it looks ugly as fuck. So you need to grind down all the tack welds and then it still looks ugly. So um, <laughs> this needs some paint. But before we get to that, um, the entire interior of a car needs to be sandblasted we'll get to that in the next video but um yeah i made a lot of mistakes but you have to learn somewhere and uh, it was kind of a fun experience in general um and i decided i'm going to do the sheet metal work for the rear quarter panel as well for this bit down here where there's like a hole and then this hole here yeah nasty hole and then this hole and then this like entire section here they did it really poorly but um, i'm going to be doing that myself um those stuff will also only come in the next video so that's about it for now again sorry this video is like a very strange structure but i hope you guys enjoyed it like and subscribe and all that share it with some friends um stay tuned cheers this is even more entertaining. There's a rock inside. <laughs> oh, oh, oh.